Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in to this video in the series that I've been running on COVID-19 and issues in Vermont and just talking to a range of different people about how they're addressing life in the era of isolation and COVID-19. Uh, today, I have Reverend Joan Javier Duval. She is from the Unitarian Church of Montpelier. Uh, she's with us today. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the resources Vermonters are accessing um, through their faith and through the faith community. And uh, this is one of the many faith communities in Vermont. Joan's also involved with Interfaith Action and so is touching in on many of the communities. And I'm sure maybe you're all talking about how each of you are doing in this moment of physical isolation. Uh, so Joan, thank you for joining me today. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. As a leader in the faith community and amongst leaders across many faith communities, do you have any brief general advice for people in this time? First of all, I would say that it's important to just acknowledge how challenging of a time this really is. Um, and in this challenging time, it's just so important to stay connected in whatever ways we can. And for folks who are already connected with the faith community, that's wonderful and, and uh, find out how you can be plugged into whatever your faith community is offering. If you're not connected with a faith community or spiritual community, now is actually a really great time. Maybe you were curious about checking out a, a local church or synagogue or some other kind of spiritual community. And um, many communities are offering things that are available to people regardless of geographic location. Uh, and the final thing I would say is just don't be afraid to ask for help. This is such an important time to keep reaching out and letting others know when you need support. We're in a in a big holiday season, you know, uh, Easter, Passover, these family uh, holidays that are often spiritual based. Um, how are you and the community you lead um, functioning in this moment of these very significant holidays? I think it's important to acknowledge that these rituals and traditions are very important and can be especially important when time starts to just run together and it seems like the days are just flowing into one another and we kind of lose a sense of meaning behind time that the rituals and this spring season, the Passover that just began last night, um, this Holy Week and with culminating in Easter and Ramadan coming up, these are all ways, um, really regardless of your faith tradition, um, to remind ourselves that human community has been gathering and marking time in these important ways for millennia. Um, and I think, you know, faith communities can absolutely still be a resource during this time. Um, and I was, you know, hearing from colleagues about ways that they've offered gathering to do Seder together. Um, we are having, you know, our, our regular Sunday services, including honoring um, Easter and what that means in the spring season. So there are resources that way. I think that people can also really just lean on your own personal or household or family traditions. And this is really a time to uh, honor the wisdom that you have within yourself, um, traditions mm. that you might have developed on your own or with your family. Um, and now is really a time to revive those, resuscitate those, um, and lean into those traditions and the fact that we can all access the sacred um, no matter where we are or who we might have um, around us. With respect to um, Easter weekend and or Passover or other religious traditions that are happening right now, um, you talked about people reaching out. How do people reach out to their faith communities. I mean, I, I don't think they can just drop into their local mosque or synagogue or church or institution. What are some of the ways people can reach out uh, and find you? That's a great question. We've all had to do a, a lot of um, adjustment to how we can be reached by folks within our community and even beyond, regardless of if you're a member or not. Um, affiliated formally or not with a religious or faith community. Um, a lot of things have moved online and we've relied a lot on email communication with folks. But one thing that we've done in our congregation and I imagine other 
faith communities have done is, is just using good old traditional phone calling um, and reaching out to people directly to see what they need and how they might be doing and creating um, that kind of connection that even if someone's not needing something in the moment, they know now that they're supported and can reach out um, and who to call. And it may not actually be the pastor, or the minister, or the imam, it might be someone else um, a peer, you know, a fellow um, member of your faith community that you reach out to. Um, we've developed in our congregation sort of small group caring clusters that are for five or six households mm. to kind of look out for one another. And, you know, I think that's a really natural thing for Vermonters to do in general, right? Neighbors um, kind of joining together and looking out for one another. And we're using that model within our congregation. Um, I've also, you know, I, I think that having low tech ways for people to be in touch is important. So I've started recording a daily phone message um, that people can just call a number and they're not talking to me live, but they can hear my voice and hear a, a nice. few words of inspiration um, and still feel like they're connected to a spiritual leader. I've heard uh, from a lot of folks, or not a lot, but I've heard in social media and folks have been reaching out around um, some forms of almost to be defined as xenophobia towards folks from other states who are maybe being interpreted as fleeing their communities where there might be higher rates of COVID-19 and settling into their second homes in Vermont where they normally would come up for the summer, but they're coming up earlier and folks are concerned that they might be, you know, bringing this illness to Vermont. Um, how, have you heard some of that? And, and how would you address that from a, a religious and faith spiritual leading way in, in the readings that you sometimes even work from? What would you offer for people who are feeling that concern? I'm very aware of the fear that is, is so alive right now for, for people. I mean, fearing for their own health and safety and the health and safety of loved ones who, um, you know, are perhaps on the front lines every day and are really putting their lives at risk, um, whether it's in healthcare or doing essential, essential service work like at the grocery stores. Um, and that fear is just so palpable, is so real, and um, I think absolutely can drive um, a sense of needing to protect ourselves and and um, and then needing to um, to sort of uh, keep out what might feel like it's a danger um, and and that I think is you know a part of the human experience that we just can't get away from um, and I you know when when talking with folks in my own community um, I try to just acknowledge that fear um, I try to acknowledge how uncertain everything feels. Um, and I do, you know, try to also call us, call us back to that notion of that we're, we're in this together and that who we, um, if we can imagine who we want to be, what kind of community we want to be after this pandemic, it means we have to live that now. Um, and so whatever values, you know, we can hold on to now are the foundation we'll continue to build on once we're through this. And so we all have to do our own discernment about what that, what that really means um, and how we can continue to uh, offer welcome and look out for one another um, across, our, across our differences. I'm, I'm curious how you where, do you, where do you seek your balance? Um, what do you lean on in your life of knowledge and experience in, in, the, in the teachings that you follow to um, stay grounded in a place of, of empathy and embrace versus that fear and push away energy? That's a good deep question there <laughs> to consider. <laughs> it's wonderful. You know, one thing that does come to mind is also the, just the notion of um, scarcity versus abundance. And when we start right. to um, really feel like resources are scarce um, and you know that's all over the news there isn't enough personal protective equipment there aren't enough masks to go around um, this can really start to build our own sense of personal fear um, and buy and buy into that story of scarcity rather than abundance and that um, and a trust that there will be enough and can be enough and especially if we uh, work together and um, continue to offer our gifts and I I, I honestly, I, um, 
uh, my prayer practice hasn't been ever been as strong as it is right now. And for me, that really just means um, waking up in the morning before anyone else in my house and sitting right. on sitting on my meditation cushion for um, 10 minutes if I can, um, you know, lighting a candle and um, and just having a sense of um, it's not always peace. It's really just mm. uh, starting with acceptance and um, compassion for myself uh, first and foremost, and and really just trying to ground myself in what and who am I connected to beyond myself. Um, and so I I meditate on that and pray on that each morning, um, and that that helps me to stay centered. And I do also try to absolutely recall. Um, stories from many different traditions, um, biblical stories, um, stories of just humanity, of, of people showing love and kindness to one another, to their neighbors, as being a source of inspiration for myself. Do you have uh, any other stories, um, maybe a story from someone you've known uh, in your community um, that will help keep some hope and faith going for others. I'd, I'd be happy to share just a, a very recent one. And um, it begins with kind of a grief, which is that um, every Monday, our church um, was in the routine of offering um, a free community meal, which other faith communities in Montpelier also do. Um, and as the orders came came down to you know stay at home, and we decided to close our building, and it just wasn't safe for people to come in and prepare meals. Um, but we were really paying attention to what other services were being offered. Um, and, you know, as I, I'm sure you know, in central Vermont, there's been a wonderful response and coming together of different agencies and organizations and churches in Barrie, um, which is down the road. Um, and so I've had some communication um, with the pastor of Enough Ministries, which is preparing hundreds of meals every week for folks. Um, and, you know, I reached out to say, what can we possibly do to help as a community? And the thing that they asked for was notes, um, encouraging notes to put in with each meal um, that they send out that are just to uplift people um, and some Easter eggs for the kids. And so we got word out quickly to folks in our community and um, we have those notes and those eggs to pass along. Mm. Um, and, it's a, and it's just a, a small um, sign of our love and our support and our neighborliness, but it's one that I know all of the folks in our congregation are, are just so honored and delighted to be able to offer and to, to bridge um, sort of a, um, to make a bridge between one faith community and another faith community. You know, it's helpful. I think people are looking for connection, especially in this distant space that we're in. Uh, and even the term social distancing is a bit of a misnomer because we have to be spatially distant, but we don't actually have to be socially distant. Uh, we have to figure out how to be socially close in this two-dimensional world, uh, or maybe out on the road when we can talk across the street to each other. But um, it's nice to hear some of those activities that are happening and, and ways for people to volunteer. Many people are volunteering through the faith community as well as other opportunities in the community. So thank you for sharing that. Um, thank you so much for being here with me today. Um, I just wanna remind our viewers as I do at the end of every program that healthvermont.gov has a lot of information. Uh, my own website, uh, zuckerman4vt.com has a lot of information about COVID-19 and other podcasts like this with, you know, mental health counselors, teachers, uh, now faith leaders, and we'll try to get some others um, just as a brief resource for people to um, reach out and find out ways to access uh, community, uh, public services, and so forth. Uh, again, I'm Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman. This is another in my brief video series of uh, podcasts around how we're living with COVID-19 and speaking with experts from around the state. Uh, thank you for joining me, uh, Joan, uh, Reverend, and um, in these challenges time, challenging times.